this movie we will introduce what happens when atoms are exposed to strong laser fields. We will present some basic concepts that will be important for you to understand in order to get the most out of the other movies. In the time lapse you just saw, a femtosecond laser was focused in air and the intensity was slowly increased. You see two things happen as intensity increases. First, the position where the laser is focused light up. We have created a glowing plasma. Second, the color of the light changes from invisible to white light. The plasma is produced when the atoms and molecules in the air are ionized. And the first thing we need to calculate is the energy of an electron in a strong laser field. This wiggle energy is usually referred to as the ponderomotive energy. We write the electric field of the laser as an amplitude and a sine function. And we start with the force exerted on the electron, which of course is the charge times the field strength. And then in turn, this equals the mass times the acceleration. From this expression, the acceleration is calculated in the following way. And by integrating the acceleration, we get the velocity of the electron in the field. Finally, we can calculate the time average energy of the electron, which is the ponderomotive energy, like this. And since the time average of a cosine function is one half, we end up with the following very compact expression for the ponderomotive energy. And what this means is that when an electron is ionized in the presence of a strong field, we have to provide it with sufficient energy to overcome both the ionization potential of the system, but also the ponderomotive energy. In this experiment that you see here, we have ionized an atom using a femtosecond XEV pulse in the presence of a rather strong IR field. What you see is the energy of the electron coming out. When the two femtosecond pulses overlap, the final energy of the electron is actually reduced by the ponderomotive energy. So far we've sort of neglected what happens if the electron is released while the laser is on. Using an nanosecond pulse, we can precisely choose when, during the laser cycle, the electron should be released, and the final energy actually depends on when it's born. To calculate this, we use the same expression for the electric field, but we also define the vector potential like this. And in this case, it's more convenient to calculate the momentum of the electron, and therefore we write the force as so. When we integrate this expression, we see that the initial timing becomes important. And also, if the electron had an initial momentum, it would enter here, but for now we assume this to be zero. Rewriting this expression, we see that the momentum of the electron is given by the difference between the vector potential at the time of ionization and the present time. But when we measure the electron, the laser field is no longer present and we're left with a drift momentum. This is the basic concept of attosecond streaking which is another movie, but here we see three different trajectories. Depending on when the electron is born in the laser field, it will wiggle around as long as the laser field is on, and eventually it will end up with a drift momentum. That depends on the initial timing. So far we've said that the electron is ionized by an XEV pulse, or an attosecond pulse, but it could of course also be ionized by the strong laser field itself, usually then through tunnel ionization. In this case, we start with an atom, with the electron in its ground state. The laser field that is added and it distorts the potential, making a barrier through which the electron may tunnel out. This tunneling is the first step in the so-called three-step model. The next step is that the electron is accelerated in the laser field. And finally, the third step is depending on the time of ionization, the electron may actually be driven back to the vicinity of the ion. And here, a number of things can happen. It could scatter or knock out a second electron, but it may also recombine, emitting all the accumulated energy in a burst of light. This is so-called high harmonic generation. But that, my friends, is a topic of another movie.